Hello there my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's video we're going to be trying out the Falcon 2 Pro enclosed laser engraver and cutter. So Creality was nice enough to send this to me to give it a go and of course share it with you. So we're going to be trying out a few different materials, both cutting and engraving and both on metal and wood. Now of course you'll be able to find links in the description box down below if you want to check it out yourself. Now first of course we needed to just open up the box which in this case was pretty huge. And that turns out to be partly because this is actually mostly pre-assembled, which I always appreciate when that's the case. It just saves a lot of time in, first of all, having to put the machine together before you can actually start using it. But we didn't have to do that in this case. The machine itself is pre-assembled. You just have to put together the enclosure that goes on top of it. So, of course, that was then the first thing we needed to do. And it wasn't really that difficult. So we just spent a bit of time on getting that all put together properly and obviously learning how everything works. So this is actually a little bit different than previous ones I've tried that have an enclosure. And my impression is that in designing this, Creality thought ahead of a few different situations where certain design features actually would be better. So for instance, when opening and closing the enclosure, it doesn't lift over the top of the machine like some do. You actually slide the opening back and forth, which means that you don't need a load of extra space on top of the machine to be able to just open it. And that makes it ideal if you have it located in a place where it's kind of on a shelf and is meant to permanently be situated there to obviously avoid bringing it in and out every time you want to use it. You don't need to have all that extra space on top so it's more likely to be able to fit on a shelf because you can literally slide the opening back and forth. So that I thought was really clever. And also on the bottom you actually have a drawer design that you pull out. So for instance when you've cut anything and it falls down onto the base you can literally pull out the drawer and then clean it out and then close the drawer again. So again, you don't have to move the machine around, have a load of extra space around the machine to be able to access things. And again, same principle, it's easier to have a situated in a place where you don't have loads of extra space around the machine itself. So I thought all those design features were really cleverly thought out by them, especially because the machine itself is already pretty big, but you don't have to then add loads of extra space around the machine just to be able to access things. So that was definitely my first impression and I'm very impressed with that. Now with it being an enclosed machine as well, the purpose of that is to minimize all the smoke and smell that the machine can create obviously while working with it, mainly if you're cutting or engraving onto wood. And it can be quite unpleasant and obviously it's not ideal to be inhaling all that kind of stuff anyway. So the purpose of the enclosure is to prevent that from seeping out and then there's also a hose attached to it that you can for instance bring out through a window or something like that to then help get all that smoke and smell that collects inside the enclosure to then help go out through a window for instance. And I will say it really does help and it makes a massive difference. So if you are interested in trying out a laser and you plan on maybe trying to do it more as a business, I do highly recommend looking at getting one with an enclosure. It makes a massive difference and you're going to thank yourself for that. <laughs> or even if it's just to play around with as a hobby, it just makes the process so much more pleasant and obviously healthier as well. Now the first thing that I wanted to try out with a laser was to engrave onto some wood and the very specific pieces here. So I've had this idea for a while when I saw you could get blank dice out of wood and I thought they'd be perfect to engrave onto with a laser. And my idea was to engrave certain things onto them and use them for possibly a challenge video in the future. Something a bit of fun hopefully. So the idea is that one dice will have mediums on it. So each side will of course have a different medium. So for instance, wire work, macrame, kumuhimo. And then I also added wire kumuhimo, wire macrame, and wire crochet. So basically the mediums that I've worked with on this channel before. And the point is to use the dice to obviously roll it. And then the dice will determine what medium I'm going to use for a certain project. And then next I made one with colours on. So I just put all the rainbow colours on it, one on each side. And again, you roll that. That then determines what colour I'll be working with. And then finally I made a dice that's basically meant to be the inspiration or the theme, whatever you want to call it, for the piece. So I have nature, minimalist, bohemian, art deco, and then we have modern and statement. So basically we made some personalised dice and I think that's really cool and I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think they look really nice and I also got an idea when we did them because obviously the engraving onto the dice it kind of cuts into the wood a bit. So in my head I thought it'd be cool to basically fill it in instead of leaving it like it is. Fill it in with either paint or resin that's coloured and that way the words would end up being coloured instead of being just kind of singed wood like it is. I haven't done that and I don't know if I will, but I just kind of thought that would be a good idea. Something a bit fun, especially on the dice with the colours. You could colour each word with the actual colour that it says. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. But anyway, we ended up with these dice. I'm really happy with them and hopefully maybe at some point I'll use them for a fun challenge video on my channel. 
I think it could be fun anyway to add some different content here and there. Now after the dice we moved on to engraving onto some metal and I have these blanks where there's basically no holes in them so obviously if you want to use them for jewelry you need to capture them in a different way and that was on purpose I wanted to basically have some blanks that didn't already have a hole so I could capture them a bit like you would capture a cavachon and that's my idea with these as well so I have them both in silver and blue and we ended up on one of them engraving believe in yourself both in the blue and the silver and then the other one I engraved the words yes, no, and maybe around in a circle. So that could end up being a bit like a fidget toy in a style of jewelry and hopefully also elegant at the same time. And maybe even something that could help make decisions, who knows? But my thought with these is to basically capture them so they also have some movement in them so they could be spun around inside what they've been captured in. And that's mainly obviously the yes, no, and maybe one. That could be kind of cool to then have it settle on a word and that would be the answer that you're looking for. Now obviously these two are different from each other, they both have a very shiny surface but one is silver and one is blue. And as for the silver you're obviously kind of just engraving into it and the engraving is still going to be silver or a little bit darkened depending on the settings that you're using. And on the blue, in my personal opinion, the aim is to basically just remove the blue layer and that way you reveal the silver that's underneath and then that will be your engraving. Of course you can also make it dark depending on your settings. But for the blue one we aimed at just removing that blue coating and that worked out pretty well. I think it's a really lovely contrast between the blue coating and then the silver. That's actually the stainless steel underneath. But regardless, I think they all turned out really nicely and I'm definitely going to be using those for some jewelry, like I said, capturing them a little bit in the style of a cabochon. Maybe even some different mediums or something, but at least definitely wire work. I already have a couple ideas, so watch out for that. Next, I also recently found these pendant blanks that I really, really like the look of. And it's basically a pretty long rectangle with a hole in the top and it's an even thickness all the way around, so it's a little bit of a thick blank. But then the purpose of that is that you basically have four even sides that you can engrave onto. And that's exactly what I did. So I wanted this to be quite a personalised one. So the four sides fit perfectly with my little family that we have. So there's obviously me, then there's my husband, and then we have our two babies, Gizmo and Newt. So our two cats. And then for this I chose to use the rose gold one. And there with the engraving, that'll be the same principle as the blue blank we just looked at. Because basically what you're doing is removing the rose gold layer and then it reveals the silver stainless steel underneath. Of course, like I said, you can also make it a dark engraving depending on the settings. And I'm really happy with how it looks and this will definitely be one of my favourites to wear. Of course, because it's so meaningful to me. Now, of course, engraving onto something like this is always a little bit more nerve-wracking because you have four sides on the same piece that you need to get perfect every time you're doing a side. But that's where the camera on this machine comes in as well. So that makes it a lot easier because... You can literally use the camera to help you position what you want to engrave onto the piece. And as long as you make sure to calibrate the camera properly first, it should make the process so much easier and quicker. And it should also be pretty guaranteed that you get the result that you want. So the camera already comes in the enclosure and that's another big plus with it, I think. And especially if you say you want to run a business, using the camera is going to help make things so much quicker and easier to do. And you can literally get the machine to work on multiple things at the same time because you can basically use the camera to control it. Now the final thing I just wanted to try with this machine as well was cutting some wood because I always like to test out machines with both engraving and cutting and I had a file that I previously used on some cute little jewellery boxes so we just tried cutting out one of those and literally it went perfect in the first try. It cut through nicely without singeing the wood too much so obviously that is a matter of finding the right settings but also regarding the singeing of the wood that was also helped greatly with the kind of honeycomb base that came with the machine as well. So basically for this one, they have these slats that you place into the machine that can work as a honeycomb base, which means you can put your pieces on there, whether it's plywood or something you want to cut through, but you have gaps between the slats, which means that also brings air to underneath your piece, which helps prevent the singeing on either side. And with these slats, you can actually move them around and position them however you want to, and you can also actually make them lie flat in case you need more of a flat surface to put something on, especially for the smaller jewellery pieces, for instance so they don't say fall through the gaps between the slats. So again, that was pretty innovative and I haven't seen a honeycomb base design like that before. And what's a big plus is that it comes with a machine where you buy it, whereas often you'll have to buy that kind of thing separately. So obviously that just adds to the cost, but this one pretty much comes with everything you need just in one. And I always really appreciate that, so you don't have to buy loads of separate things, basically just to use the machine as well. But like I said, it cut the plywood really well and we ended up with a cute little jewelry box. 
but of course you can then also paint or not depending on your personal preference. But that is then everything that we tried with this machine. I'm really happy with all the results. I think it did really well. I'm quite impressed with it. And it's definitely one I would be using again, especially because I really appreciate the enclosures now. At least when working with cutting through wood, it really makes a massive difference for how pleasant it is to work with. So of course, like I said, all links will be in the description box down below. So you can always go there and have a look yourself if you're interested. And again, thank you very much to Creality for sending this to me to try out. I really appreciate it and I really enjoyed the machine. And I'm really happy with how everything came out. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.